Yo. Yo. What's it doing, my bear? It's good at it's grandma's house. Yeah. We're hanging out at your grandma's. Georgia living. Yeah. Under the Spanish moss. Mmm. Yeah. Been digging holes. Fuck it. Visiting an old folks home. Yeah, jeez. Yeah. Which I guess is an upgrade from visiting the hospital. That's what I was doing when I first got here. Yeah. 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 When we, we, I mean, your grandma's in her 90s, do we think? She's 90. Oh. Yeah. Wow. She made it. She's a good she run. She's a big mine, 9 now. Yeah. Yeah. And she's had a hard time for the past few years. She's had hospitalizations that we thought were maybe the last one. And this time she's definitely interdimensional fully. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's been lots of dementia and delusion or whatever that is, but also some psychic stuff going on with her, which is really crazy and cool. Like psychic savagery. (laughs) <laughs> fucking screaming all over the goddamn place <laughs> well yeah and totally out of control <laughs> just an out of control woman uh yeah they, it's like she's accusing the people in the nursing home of abusing her and she's been doing that i guess before and my mom said and um i felt really between like a rock and a hard place at first when she confronted me about it of course because like i care for her and i'm fighting for her and so of course i'm like csi investigator trying to write down the names of the people of course you can't remember anything because it's not actually true oh my god um of course i've been on like deep investigation the whole week and when i go for the first 15 minutes after i say hey i'm mary lynn here for mary lynn and we go get her there's 15 minutes of her screaming and pretending like somebody's hitting her or something but they're really just trying to get her ready and i got an inkling into it even more when i was trying to wheel her through the door last time because she has such bad balance like she can't even stand up any motion in the wheelchair i'm I'm pushing the wheelchair as slow as humanly possible but that's overwhelming to her Mm. you know so i could see and, and so she started to like say stop stop when i was pushing her through the door but it's like i couldn't go any slower so you could see how that when you have dementia like she's feeling overwhelmed with her nervous system and then she's scared and she's delusional and then those turns into like stories of abuse because she's always lived in this like non-responsible kind of place emotionally or whatever you know it's perpetuating itself into her adulthood but um yeah it's cool it's been like really magical and special and scary and heavy and Mm. like everything um and yeah, I don't think it's random that I'm the one that's down here with her. And it's it's been nice. And my dad will be here this weekend. She's been asking about him all week. So that's good. Mm. Um, You're her namesake. Yeah, I am. I'm the Marylander of the Marylanders. So. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And a bunch of stuff came out this week about, you know, the the un, um, unprocured wishes of her lifetime that she'd like me to, you know, go after and. That's, oh yeah, that's pretty cute too. Yeah, I mean, I told you the big one is always like church choir. Like she wants me. To We're, on church choir, We're on it. We're on that. That's that's yeah, fully. I was like that one's down. At I least. think technically we, we could check that box in a way. Yeah. 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 We She's... have a church, and we have a choir. Yeah, and I also found out recently that she almost before she married Glenn almost married this other guy just because he was in this band and she could be a singer in the band and she like secretly Ooh, wanted to be a singer. So I'm like, damn. oh, see, there's all these like little you know genetic things wow. that i got passed down that i have little loops i have to tie up for people you know Damn. um but perceivably like if you just looked at the stories it seems like we're kind of different like she lived a very uh dependent life on glenn and um whatever but you just get around people and you're like oh god like we're all the same with a pattern you know yeah. just spinning around the same thing and her relationship with Glenn is really cool and almost seems like unreal fairy tale style. You know, they oh, were married yeah. for over 60 years and before he died. And um, yeah, they they seem very much like. Well, well that's what I, I was asking you the other day. Like you came back the, the first time you came back from the nursing home and you looked frazzled, dazzled. I yeah. was like, what's going on? And she's like, yo, she's fucking screaming and this and that. And I fucking thought about it all day. And then I was like, how long were they together? And you were like 60 years. And I was like, I would do the same thing. I'd fucking flip out. Yeah. Yeah. If my lover of 60 years isn't here anymore. And like the thing that just made me want to be alive and feel connected to this place isn't there. And I'm losing my mind. Yeah. Yeah, I might wild out a little bit. Yeah, when he died, I had to come down here and teach her how to pump gas and use a credit card and all of these things that she'd never done before because Glenn always did everything for her. So, yeah, life without Glenn was definitely, I'm sure, paralyzing in a lot of ways to her. Hmm. Um, 
But she has this beautiful house and this beautiful garden that really calls people to tend to it. I feel like, you know, yeah. it's really called me to like take care of it. Um, and that was one of the psychic things that went down was I'd been digging holes for the past few days and didn't tell her that I did say that I was gardening. I was going to the garden store and sitting down with her. She was asking me where I was digging the hole. Like I'm digging the hole on the side of the highway. And I said, no, I'm digging holes at your house. She knew. But she, she's like kind of tapped into my imagination. Um, and the boyfriend thing too, I think. She is, didn't know, but know. she knew. <laughs> yeah. She didn't have the information, she was, but she knew. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like she always asked me if I have a man, that's like what grandma's always asking, you know, and yeah. I'm always saying no. And she asked me about my boo like three days ago and I was like, who? I don't like, I don't have a bow or whatever. And she's like, you have a boyfriend. I was like, no, I don't. She's like, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i do think she's tapped in and that's why my ears are like the most perked up they've ever been just generally around old people it's not just her specific i just think they're like closer you know more interdimensional than we are so they're picking oh, yeah. up more things you know um but yeah she was asking about you know it's, isn't the little girl so cute i'm like what little girl she's like you don't see the little girl in the room I'm like, oh no. man <laughs> and that's most of the conversations like when i first came here she, she seemed to be a little bit more present and have to like earth conversations with me but now it's basically just constantly wading through like delusions and mm. things that aren't there and like she's like does somebody die and i'm like uh yeah all the time yeah and she, <laughs> she's like in the, in the movie we're watching we're like outside watching you know looking oh, at trees uh, i'm like <laughs> i don't know actually this is <laughs> <damn>. <laughs> let's see let's just keep watching you know the crazy thing um, is people can live like that for a long time yeah. She could still, who knows? Yeah. She could still make it a while. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope she, I, I hope she's not suffering, but I think she is. Well, she's mainly, yeah. she's mainly suffering physically. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's what I guess is, is caught perpetuating the dementia to be worse and worse because like she doesn't want to be in the body that she's in because it's such a prison now, you know, she can't walk, she can't get up, she can't do anything for herself. She has so much pain and you can't imagine how much pain you're in. Like when none of like so many of your organ systems aren't functioning and stuff. Mm. Um, and so then she doesn't eat and doesn't take care of herself. And then of course her brain is going to not have the connection that it needs. To, and then it's sort of obviously like snowballs. Mm. Um, and I've seen that even here and there's different, like I know that human presence makes her more present. And, you know, all of these basic things. And it seems like the one day that she was really upset at me, like she hasn't, she's been all kinds of upset, but not upset at me, except for one of the days. I had an inkling that it was probably just, it was if, like a week after she'd been in the hospital, the, the first day that they had taken her pain meds down a notch. Because mm -hmm. it can't just be small things like that in the equation. That's like, yeah. yeah, your emotional intelligence is a little bit off. Like you're a little bit cranky. You have dementia. So like, you know, you're swerving around all of these fractured timelines. You yeah. Know, it's like, <clears throat> Yeah. Wow. Yeah, wild stuff. But yeah, she's definitely been this totem of like, take care of yourself, you know, yeah. like almost like a, a, um, a good omen. I was going to say bad omen, but like, you know, why you need to keep active and keep your mind active and keep going because, you know, you stop living and you really stop living. Yeah. And it's sad because I really just do just want her to be at peace. It's like, I, I know you're not excited to be here. I'm not trying to convince you to be excited to be here. You know, I, yeah. I just want you to do whatever you want to do. And we've had some interesting deeper conversations too about death we have for the past few years. Um, and that's kind of interesting too. Yeah. Wow. Um, it's crazy. Did, yeah. did her husband, your, your grandfather die suddenly or he died, um, in a similar, she's kind of going through a similar thing. He fell and broke his hip. She fell and broke her ribs and then he kind of stopped eating. Oh, and yeah, then a couple weeks that. after that he passed. Crazy. Yeah. You know, it's been really psychedelic just being in this house for three weeks is like not really knowing the details of your grandparents life but f kind of feeling into it from just living here yeah because it, it does it does seem like they just got disappeared out of here yeah like it, it it doesn't seem like you know someone came in here and wrapped up it looks like someone lived in here and then yeah. all of a sudden they were gone one day yeah so i'm here like it reminds me of this game i used to play when i was a kid called mist where you were just like just thrown into a a situation um, the, uh, some island and yeah you're like what the hell's going on here i don't even know the <laughs> point of this game but that's how it feels like I'm a, i wake up every day and i walk around this house and i collect little weird details and i'm like oh okay well he retired he retired august 31st 1984 and it says on the plaque 30 years so man he worked for ford for 30 fucking years and i just start thinking about it and feeling into that and like 
the whole of this guy's life is all here in in books and photos and little home movies and plaques and the stuff he had the stuff that they collected from their travels you know they seem like really cool people um who you know a- adopted your dad yeah and his sister yes and um that's like so beyond commendable and yeah. i think it's it's like it's worth mentioning especially because now abortions are going to be illegal in this country yeah that most of the people talk to these people who are out there making people not get abortions and ask them how many pe- how many kids they've adopted yeah it's usually 0.0 every time yeah 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 um <laughs> And you, and your grandparents uh, adopted your dad, and we saw the first picture of them together the other day, and they're all glowing. You totally. can tell, like, like oh my they god, were, they're unreal. That picture is unreal. It's crazy. It's just like the perfect fifties family. Yeah, like the Johnsons or yeah, something. Just yeah, just like perfect American fifties family, and yeah. everyone's glowing like yeah. they were always meant to be together. Yeah, and and it's so cool. And your dad was a really smart guy, so you know he was just like off on his own trip, pretty much still, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it, re- it really worked out, and he's always been, like, really defensive and, um, like, championing him as his mother if I ever had, you know, when I was really young and ignorant as, like, a child being like, do you ever want to know who your real mom is? And, like, really hurtful stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and then I understood really fast. Like, he's like, this is my fucking mom. Like, she, well, ra- like, she fucking her. raised me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, yeah, Mary, like, it's it's been such a blessing to get to know Mary in her later years now. I wish we could have known what they were like back then, you know? Yeah, she's hilarious, though. Yeah. And when she, like, the pe- the first couple of days I was here, I mean, she's cracking jokes every chance she can get if she is on this plane. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, it makes me think she just, yeah, had a marvelous Miss Maisel timeline that didn't yeah. quite <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <exactly. laughs> get out there for her. Um, yeah, but it's unreal being in this house. A lot of spirits in this house. Like, yeah. you know, like, I'm seeing so many things. Yeah. Um, and uh, a lot of, I mean, just, yeah, there's like old guns on the wall. and It's just a time capsule <laughs> for how people used to live. There's like an intercom system. Yeah, it's almost there's like a There's a little museum. fence here it's between the... being a museum. Yeah, to- like it really is. And it's, it's not like they were rich people or anything like that. You could tell like yeah. this was their working class like retirement. They saved up. Yeah. He retired. Yes. Lived outside Michigan and then came down here. Yes. And uh, it's just beautiful house on a beautiful island. It's so cool. And they beautified the property and everything. And I never knew you were a gardener till this week. <laughs> Fucking crazy. Yeah, I love it. I thought I would be more excited about the things I was going to do inside the house when I got here because I knew that this is like part of my future, part of my inheritance, yeah. you know, part of my family. And I know that my mother and my father don't really want to sell it. So I came down here being like, okay, cool. I'm going to like turn it into a recording studio and do a bunch of shit. And I'm not that I'm not going to do that. That was like but the I think first half I, of the first week. And then you started looking at the outside. But even then I was like, I couldn't really get that excited about it. Yeah. You know, and it was validating for me to, to hear from you guys. Like, it's like perfect how it is because it is. And there's things I need to do to, you know, make the sound a little bit better. But other than that, it's like, it's such a great piece of inner property. And it doesn't excite me too much because I'm having to redo my New York apartment too. It does. It really doesn't get my my juices going to indoor decorate for some reason. Yeah. Like, Because my mom's always surprised about it. She's like, you're so creative. Like you love decorate. Like I don't understand designing things. Why don't you like it? I, think, I don't know. I think we all would have gotten really excited about it if we stepped in here and this was a shit house in any way. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, totally. But it's not. It really is like, like the more and more time I spend here, the more I'm like, preserve this <laughs> yeah. don't even move anything yeah you know what i mean yeah. like as a documentarian i'm like this is a document <laughs> totally. of how people lived when things were a little slower yeah and i i love it the internet yeah. doesn't even reach into the room right? <laughs> i doubt your grandparents ever even fucking use the internet i no. think that's probably something since oh it's it's yeah it's post post them for but sure. like there's not tvs all over the place yeah. like you know what i mean yeah. there's not a million ways of being contacted there is an intercom system which yeah. is, is it's hilarious because it, it talks more to like how quiet everyone was speaking because if you say anything in this room you're gonna hear yeah the yeah i, I like think <laughs> there was like like um an elegance that it, in the yeah. way people lived that yeah. has been sucked out of like the working class yeah. uh lifestyle yeah. now like there's a wet bar there yeah. and like <laughs> most people don't even know what a fucking wet bar is <laughs> yeah and i'm like what's this closet i open it up and it's like pristine wet bar you know yeah a lot of closets full uh, of shit here oh yeah crazy yeah. shit but the outside it never endingly excites me yeah to work with yeah it's really cool um 
and it's really like I go into the plant store and it's just like all these plant spirits talk to me and they're mm. like, they're going to sing their tune on this property. They and, want out. They want to live know. their life. <laughs> they're like, choose me. <laughs> yeah. So I maybe go, went a little overboard. I maybe should not be allowed at the garden store alone. <laughs> I maybe have a cypress tree being delivered today. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, lots of things growing, lots of prospects. I'm excited to see how they go. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty, it's pretty rad. There is a, there is a little like... I can't quite put my finger on it, like a existential somberness that I feel when I'm here, you know, just like, wow, you know, life is so fucking temporary and I've been going at such a fucking fast speed for so long that actually I'm not sure if I've ever slowed down like this Yeah. to be in a place where we're not expected to do anything or report to anyone. We don't even have any friends on this island. Yeah. No one's coming and going. It's just like, it's really, really slowed down. Yeah. And it made me feel normal at first. And then it started making me feel crazy. Mm -hmm. And, but, but I do think, I think part of it is like feeling the spirits Mm -hmm. is like, um, we're very sensitive. We're Mm -hmm. very sensitive people. I, I think I must be feeling the spirits and just, I don't know, just thinking about life and fucking like, (laughs) God damn yeah, My grandfather fought in World War Two. Yeah, yeah, crazy pilot. Oh, well, and I was gonna say, Glenn. I always my big joke with Glenn was that he was a human embodiment of Eeyore. So he had this very like melancholy, <laughs> somber spirit. He did it, and Yo, you can imagine are you if you kidding were, me. I am not kidding you. That that is Glenn. Like that's who Glenn was. I'm laying in his chair every day and kind of being <laughs> like, I'm turning into an, an old man. I'm around going around his house feeling like an old man. Yes. Like, well. Just kind of, you know, old man face, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely kicks you into a different gear. Like, it's been, I've usually, if I'm, like, I usually wake up and run, and if I don't, I, you know, meditate before I see my grandmother, but the, the real meditation is being with her, and most of the time, we're not talking, like, I just sit with her, and it is just, like, this constant interfacing with death, and then it's yeah. the constant interfacing with how you want to live your life because of it, mm-hmm. you know? And I'm interfacing with it because I'm every day that you go off to your grandmother's house, I'm like, could this be the last day that Mary sees her grandmother? Like, weird yeah. shit like that I don't yeah. think about when we're in New York City. That like, And then you think about, like, okay, we're not having kids. Like, nobody's going to visit you when you're old. Oh, yeah. That's been a big hell, one, man. You know? Yeah. Um, trust me that's been a big one but we're gonna well i have like nieces and nephews or whatever but i also am like does that mean i have to take care of my aunts you okay do i have to take care of my aunts that didn't have kids when they're old probably like how does this all work i don't know probably but look i mean it is what it is you get a chance to come down here and do your thing and it starts going slowly but surely downhill at some point you know you don't have to uh, give in to that, that, that that's a tragedy. But if you're going to live a long life to be old, like, shit's going to start shutting down on you. Yeah. Some, well, you think, it, like, but then it makes me think, too, about, like, God, there, people die in such different ways. Yeah, right. Like, Mary is, like, I don't know what the percentage would be. I would love if somebody knew what the percentage of people that die from old age and what qualifies that, you know, mm. or just, like, past a certain age, you know. Because to me, that's like my worst nightmare, dying of old age, you know, like just. <laughs> to me, like I, 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 when I find out someone died, I'm like, how old were they? It feels like 80 plus feels like, <clears throat> no, they, they fucking, they yeah, yeah, got you, a you very did good you did chance it. at this. And then some people like get to their 80s and they're still running marathons and then they just quickly die of a heart attack. Yeah. And they lived a really long life and they never have to have this slow death process. And then some people have a slow death process starting at fucking 40. Oh, yeah. You know, like it's like we all die and live so differently, you know? Yeah. Um, Yeah, no, it's been heavy and definitely like fully part of my sadder return. And Mm. Oh, I've, uh, now that you mention it, I think I'm totally uh, haunted by by Glenn, your grandfather's <laughs> spirit. Yeah. I love yesterday, I'm just like, Mary, I need structure. Like, I'm, I'm like, why do I feel like I want to be in the military all of a sudden? Yeah, Glenn. Literally. Glenn. I'm yeah. like, I need to get up. I need to make my bed. I need to go do this. Yeah. I'm going to go for the run. Yeah. I come back. I eat my bread. Like, I'm, I'm like, if I don't have that, I'm going to lose my fucking He's very much like that. He like ate the same thing every meal for every day. You know, like, yeah. he was like very like. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm it's so very, down with that. It's very much that. Glenn's spirit. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's a hard thing in our relationship because, like, I'm so disciplined about the other discipline now in my life, mm. you know? And I was I was more on, like, the masculine Saturnian 
when I was a dancer, when I woke up and like I had bloody feet every morning and still worked out for five fucking hours and did shit, you know, I was more on that like worshiping structure and hailing that. And then as an artist evolved into worshiping really the structure of flow, you know, yeah. and, and having a, a different kind of um, discipline that I was following. Um, and so much of it comes from avoiding plans and understanding that for my creative process, they get in the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cause I'm such a wild spirit and I know that moving forward in my life and I know that has to be a priority cause it's what's brought grace into my life. And I like want to help you build structure in your life and not have like my chaos magic shit fuck with you. <laughs> it's really, it, you know? to me, it's about the day. Yeah. Cause, cause if you zoom out, like. We already know what we're doing. We've already, yeah. we, we know what we're doing the next three months. We know what we're next, doing the next 30 years. It's yeah. like, we're, we're, yeah. the, but, but we're within confused. the day, I can get caught in the illusion that everything's like slipping away, that like totally. who I am is melting away. Totally. Um, it's weird. It's that little fucking bitch capitalist in you that's like, are you being productive? Are you doing the thing? You know what I mean? And it's just like, I'm living my fucking life. Oh, yeah. Like, God damn. Yeah, no, I'm, I've been so hard on myself. That's like part of what I've been going through about, oh God, I wish I could be more productive in relationship. And it's so easy to like blame the relationship or blame what's happening. And then really it's, it's like life. This is, this is my life lesson. Just like we read in astrology, like how, how for myself can I take responsibility and power in the moment? Cause there really shouldn't be anything in the external that gets me away from doing the things I want to be doing. Mm. And if there, it is, it's on me. Like it's yeah. a total fucking illusion that it's not on me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this is all me. Like all, I, I, I had, know that intellectually, yeah. but it's hard to, yeah, we forget in the yeah. moment when we get emotional and stuff. But I had a big conversation with that, with Mary about freedom because Mary through trying to get me to think that people are abusing her. You know, I'm asking her, what do you want, Mary? I'm, I'm totally here to give you what you want. And she says, freedom, as if it's something that I can give to her. And it's crazy because I just came to that realization that moment. It's like, it's like the one thing. No, it's like one thing. Nobody can give it to you. Not a single thing outside of you. It's something you have to claim. It's something you have to fight for. Mm. And like, I can fight for her freedom outside of her, but only so much. Yeah. You know, like if she's right. not going to participate in the rehab and all of these things that she's resisting, it's like, there's only so much freedom I can give you from my end. And it's the yeah. same thing when I, you know, when I get mad at other people, it's really like me giving my freedom away and being like, why'd you do that? <laughs> it's the same thing when you curse the government. You, yeah. know? you really think a country is going to be the key to your freedom? <laughs> some fucking fake line that some fucking rich motherfucker drew. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, totally. Totally. Personal responsibility. Yeah. It's excruciating. It's like, can somebody else just do it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you, you have to uh, you have to offer that to yourself, you know, like yeah. motherfucker like Nelson Mandela goes into prison and just does it with grace. Uh, he doesn't allow the prison to imprison him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That book, The Night, changed my life. That guy wrote about being on the Holocaust and having like the only thing they couldn't take away from me was my mood. So oh, I yeah. better enjoy my time or whatever. That, yeah. should, that changed my whole fucking life after reading that book. Oh, it's yeah. Like, oh, OK. That's, Man's that's search freedom. For meaning. That's fucking freedom. Man's search for meaning. The same thing. Yeah. Guy in a Holocaust as a kid yeah, watching everybody fucking being killed. Mm -hmm. And and they're they're purposely taking out the brightest lights amongst you. Yeah. They're, they're oh. purposely. Oh, yeah, oh, he's the charismatic one. He's the funny one. Yeah. He's the one everyone looks. OK, well, well gone, gone, yeah. gone. And, um, yeah, just realizing that you can, even in that situation, kind of free yourself. Yeah, crazy intelligence to get there, you know, <sighs> crazy awareness, like crazy listening. But, it, but I don't know if it is. Is it intelligence or is it instinctual? Is it the only option? I guess because, because some people falter. Some people are in, in that situation. They, they totally fold. And some people rise to the occasion. And I, it, it's, it, it would be hard to say, like, here's the demarcation of what separates those two kinds of people yeah no and i don't mean like iq intelligence it's some sort of like emotional awareness intelligence it's like a learning because i've been thinking about that a lot Deep recently wisdom. too like like yeah we all you can have such a similar path but the way at which you learn and take from things will totally you'll have totally different psyches because of it yeah you know it's environment but it's really the way you digest your environment and, oh totally yeah well the the way the way that you digest it will um will either create like wisdom that you're going to take with you right. or like the fucking story of how you're a goddamn fool. Over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Freedom is uh, definitely, it, it's an interesting, it's an interesting word, especially here in this country. Yeah. 
um, I think because it's it's mm-hmm. not offered to us in so many ways that it has to be like the word that like distracts us from our lack of it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're fucking free. You're living this country. It's like okay. Yeah. Well, seeing free having to pay, play Monopoly. S- seeing is, having guns is freedom. It's like you're living in a prison of fear. You know. Oh yeah. Like, no. Yeah. There's there's so many ways that like. <laughs> yeah fear and freedom can get confused just like fear and love too you know mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah if we're so free why do we have to have the biggest military known to man <laughs> you know what i mean it doesn't just doesn't feel like a free person you know what i mean if we knew the neighbor had more guns than anyone in this island combined yeah and they were like i'm the most free mother i would be like i don't know you seem like you fucking imprisoned yourself yeah. here <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely definitely yeah, and it's a hard thing to offer to yourself, especially someone like me, you know. I'm kind of like Mowgli. I think you've seen that now, like living with me. I'm like, what's going on? What's, you know, <laughs> I'm like, are you mad? Is is everything okay? Like, what's going on? And it's like, I need to learn more to uh, offer it to myself, so. Yeah, yeah, the self-offering. Yeah, you can get a little bit like Mowgli confused in the moment about yeah. what people need. Yeah. <laughs> I think in those moments I just need to chill and just realize like, oh, I might need something, you know, <clears throat> like it's like not stress myself out about whether I'm being a good boyfriend or not. Just like chill the fuck out and tend to my needs. Yeah. Relationships are a trip like that. Yeah. Yeah. I've been in relationships for so long. I don't even think of it as a trip. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the trippy part is when I'm like not around you guys yeah it's very yeah it's very trippy it's very alien world to me i see the world completely differently yeah when when you guys aren't around yeah yeah it's wild yeah yeah i have to have my my instincts i have to be more about me yeah when you guys aren't around (laughs) yeah you're usually taking care of that for me yeah yeah no it's true i was just talking to you about that last week about how when i'm dating somebody i tend to express more of like a feminine nature in my life and sometimes that can be hard for me because it seems like I need to be more well-rounded with masculine and feminine energy to get done all the things I need to get done in my Mm -hmm. cosmic sphere (laughs) Um, and it is interesting like just how you change around the different people that you're around and yeah yeah Someone wrote to me the other day, we were having a conversation like this on the podcast, and afterwards someone wrote to me, um, like, what do you see as the difference between masculine and feminine energy? You know, and I, I wrote a whole thing, but I was like, man, I wish Mary could answer that question. She'd probably be much more poetic than I am about it. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm going to get a cop out to yin and yang poetry, and I think, because like, I think that's the best. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the best language that we have for it, that separates it from gender which i know can get sticky these days and i don't so maybe i will just start saying yin and yang because i keep talking about yin and yang because it does seem like this crazy binary we have in the universe like nothing <sighs> everything is spinning around this fulcrum of this yin and yang push and pull energy yeah. um and yeah the the yin the receiving the the waiting <clears throat> the yang where the you think asserting the, the going yeah there you go and and that would be the, the yang would be masculine yeah. the yin being the feminine yeah yeah, and we all have both of them in us, you know, ever present, spinning, yeah, spinning through time. And I do think s- creation, not just you know having a child, but like actual creation as an artist requires that balancing of those energies. And that's when you're like in flow, and you're in, you know, things are things are moving, and you can really put things together. And it seems like when one of those energies is abusing the other or taking over inside of you, it's when you tend to have a hard time. Um, oh yeah you know producing things out into the world mm. yeah because it's like the coming together that even allows the motion to flow or whatever and you learn that i've talked about that through like the practice of singing it seems like there's two muscles that require you to make noise singing and one seems very yang oriented and one seems very yin oriented in yeah. this weird way and really good singers have like a balance of those things and you can, it's really easy to hear the either side of that balance too when you're listening to people and so anyways, yeah, it's a fulcrum we talk about a lot. Um, well, where you, where, where, when, when you get caught in the illusion of thinking there's not balance taking place, yeah, you just got to zoom out a little, usually just a little bit, yeah. But if you need to zoom out a lot, everything yeah. is, yeah, perfectly, yeah, in balance, yeah. 
But sometimes it's like, I think I'm thinking about like patterns in my life on like, okay, I was taking amphetamines a lot and just like the worshiping of masculine energy and not allowing feminine energy in my life to really flow. And then having the backlash for a couple of years, it felt like during quarantine of all my feminine energy through the years that I shut up and like threw in the closet and didn't listen to now being like, um, now it's my fucking time and you're going to sit the fuck down and not say anything for a while, you know? And it feels like that in a lot of different realms, it feels like that with food for like, with like cookies and stuff with me, because I was so in such a deprivation state all my life. There's this part of my personality that's like really like defensive now about the other side of life, you know? Oh yeah. And I can get, um, kind of scared of myself too because how militant I am without weed when I take weed out of my life because like I've gotten out of control yeah, like totally. I've gotten out of control and yeah. so it's like I'm trying to heal that like mistrust within myself because I know the realities when I'm high frequency like none of that stuff matters yeah but yeah there's like some stories I'm trying to burn away <sighs> Mowgli. <laughs> Mowgli Artichoke. Mowgli wanted to be in this podcast, but he, like, he would have to be in the middle and you know he'd be He's doing something crazy. He's a little bit crazy. of a showman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, what were we just talking about? Oh, the, the masculine and feminine. Yeah, the yin, the yang. And, and then you were talking about um, stimulants, which had, which we've said before, more of a masculine thing. Yeah. Weed, yeah. More of a feminine energy. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. I My... Um, Damn, I had something I want to say. I can't remember. But the other way that I've been thinking about it too with stimulants and like coffee that's really allowed me to escape some of the duality of the good and the bad is elements. Like the yin and the yang is really helpful for me to understand life. And then through the elements of like fire, water, earth, and air. And fire is masculine. And that's why I think about stimulants as being masculine and things like coffee as being masculine, even though it's mm. like a plant spirit. Um, because it's a fiery energy and that's like a, a yang energy. Yeah. Um, and then I just think about how that you know besides the balancing of feminine and masculine that's almost like the secondary requirement for creation is like the balancing of the elements too mm, wow to be able to produce something and like yeah yeah the key is is to um know that that the balance is is way beyond your control yeah and not get too emotionally pulled all over the place yeah um right cuz cuz there will always be something to emotionally pull you all over the fucking place <laughs> you know, I, I get caught up in it uh, yeah you know the vast majority of my life is spent yeah you know <laughs> well we're very watery and so like part of our life is having to balance like watery energy but that's not like my dad doesn't have to go through that like genuinely is not going through this like emotional storm mm. you know which is yeah. interesting. So his, it, he's just like more, he's dealing more with like this air energy. Yeah. And I've, I've gone through frustrations because of that difference in my life being like, you don't like, why can't you feel? But it's like, he's literally just like experiencing something different. You know, I, I <laughs> feel like Cass is, an, is on much of an emotional roller coaster as either one of us. No, she's, that's why I talked about sometimes she's like, I see her spirit as like a ship because she's like, she's, in, she understands water. She sees the water. She feels the water. She's in touch with the water, but she's on top of the water. She weathers she's the storm. She's not drowning in yeah. the water. She's not swimming in the water, you know, like, yeah. and we're just some fucking mermaid undines. Yeah. I'm like <laughs> fucking getting battered around by this fucking thing. I'm trying to ride the wild, but like sometimes it gets the best of me, but it's also like, I don't know. I think what, um, makes my work interesting if it is you know what i mean i'm fucking wild like you know you've spent enough time with me now (laughs) and i'm trying to tame it around you and i'm like fucking so wild that i'm like how how can i keep doing this (laughs) i literally have the only job that i can be like this you know yeah well and you have such a beautiful amazing partnership with Cass, where she really balances you with this earth grounding energy and the air that she has and you have this water and this fiery energy that Cass really needs in her life too like Cass always talks about like i need fire you yeah. know i want that and she really doesn't have that in her chart that's why she it's sticks crazy. around crazy motherfuckers like us you know because we bring some of that balance. energy to her that balance um so yeah I, I don't know i think it speaks to how well your dynamic works too for what you're doing yeah um and yeah you don't like you want to be able to channel that energy i think that's like the whole point you channel your fire energy productively and water energy productively but um i definitely had to get out of the like demonization of the water energy you know to be able to live a free and happy life because for a long time i was so in this loop of being down on myself for being the person i am which is a feeling centered person yeah because that's not the world that we live in and that's very against how people want you to exist in this world you know and 
um, this world tends to be very air and fire, like masculine oriented still. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I feel like um, if you're doing this ascension thing right, you're kind of uncomfortable all the time. Definitely. Yeah, you know, because you're popping up levels and you're like, I'm a fucking novice again. What the fuck? I'm a rookie now. Oh, no, definitely. And, um, you know, I've I've had really good ways of, of dealing with all of this stuff and, and all the watery energy. But lately I feel like I haven't. And I got to f- develop new tools for like where I'm at as to how to deal with it. I was just saying to cast this morning, I was just like, how is it when someone walks in the room and they're depressed that you don't get depressed too? Like, you know, and, and I think this quality about me, when I think about it, makes me who I am. Of course, It yeah. makes me, it makes me care about a community because if anyone in the community is not doing good, I'm them. <laughs> I'm, I'm right there. I'm like, okay, I cannot like, that's why yeah. I, like, like I can't, you see how I am with homeless people. Like you can't just like, Oh, okay. Like, I have to acknowledge their existence and if they need money, great. If they need food, great. If they need something, I would love to try to provide it. Um, if they just need my time, you know, yeah, I got no dime, but I got some time <laughs> to hear your story. Um, you know, I, it, like I do think it makes me who I am. It makes my art what it is, Absolutely. And, but um, I, I have to figure out like ways to embrace and ways to deploy the Mercado when it's time, you know, because I will fucking get dragged every which way. And we're about to go into a movie. We're going to make a movie called Wooks. Yeah. <laughs> what am, you know what I mean? I got to fucking have my macabre strong for this fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. But it's, I think it's why I'm, uh, I, I think it's why, and unbeknownst to me, none of this has been conscious. Unbeknownst to me, it's, it's why I think of myself as a vibe smith. You know what I mean? And like really the guy, if, if I'm in a room and uh, I'm trying to make the lights right. I'm trying to make it smell good. I'm trying to make the music sound right. You know, I'm making sure everyone's needs are attended to in some way, shape, or form. Trying to be present with people, those kind of things. And I'm not trying to say I'm an angel. You know that I'm not. I'm, <laughs> I'm not. But, um, you know, this quality usually, like, leads to a po- positive things for my life. But, you know, there's also been times when it's like, you might be going through a hard time for a very real reason. You know what I mean? You, you, you're on your period and you just had a surgery and, and plus this, that, and the other. And I'm right there with you. Why do I need to do that? <laughs> it doesn't help you. It doesn't help me. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's weird. I'm like, uh, maybe that's like the, the, the no inner authority thing. Like that. Yeah. Like, I just can't yeah. get pulled in every direction. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, our curses are definitely our, our superpowers. And I think yeah. part of growing up and being an artist is, is being able to like tap into that. And I think, yeah, you, you've been really good at it. But it's when it's more intense, it's like it's a more intense thing to try and wrangle and tame. Yeah. And I, I have that similar story of like taming and restraining of energy in yeah. the universe, you know, because I'm also dealing with a lot, a mm-hmm. flood of things all of the time. Um, <clears throat> I, I, so I, I honestly recommend people that if you have an inkling that you're an artist, which everyone is, yeah. stay claim to that shit. The sooner the better, because it becomes the way to process everything we're talking about. Absolutely. Even when I wasn't even conscious of all the shit I'm talking about, I was processing it through my art. I was trying to show the world who yeah. I want to be, you know, how I see this place. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I feel like the sooner you can stake claim to that, you're giving yourself permission to start processing these things through songs or paintings or photographs or podcasts or yeah. fucking yeah. NFTs or yeah. films. That's all art is, is like the way you process something, yeah. you know, and everybody processes something different. That's why art's never endingly interesting. Yeah. Know? Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, that's a cool way to process what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Like, like we, like, you know, what your dad does is so foreign to us, but there's an artistry to that. Oh, like, absolutely. Like he's working with words in a way that like, it seems like advanced calculus. <laughs> And I have and I have my head wrapped around this language pretty nicely. Oh, for sure, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you, you know, it, it, and there's an artistry to that, and he's processing something uh, through that, and you know, uh, he's probably processing a lot of grief. Yeah, I would think. I think we all are. Yeah. But you know, I, I even I don't know your dad that well, but I know his daughter really well. Yeah. And I know he's done his best, and I know that um, if he's addicted to anything, it's work. Yeah. And, uh, the, the people that I've seen that, um, are, are workaholics are, are almost in a way more hardcore about not dealing with their emotional issues or processing their grief than people that are say abusing drugs. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. and him and my mom who are still together have a good balance in their energies and that she's a cancer moon mm. and so she like sh- i always used to say like she's crazy enough for both of them and he holds it down enough for he's both not of crazy them. at all no and i i used to and now not right now but like the past few years it seems like i'm able to be closer with my mother because there's more of a resonance and an understanding in the way at which we process life which is more watery and with my dad, it's been hard to understand. Again, it seems disassociative to me, and I've demonized that word. And really, through my own Saturn return, being in an air sign, being in Aquarius, where all my dad's planets are and stuff, mm. I've really come to realize like it's not a negative thing. Like being disassociative is actually a really amazing tool. And I do think he has a problem, like everybody, and maybe more extremely about denial and not processing emotions. But I genuinely think he's also just not experiencing them like we're experiencing them oh yeah like he's just totally. more of an airy person so yeah. it's like just where he wants to spend his time and energy mm-hmm. um because i used to be like like yeah i used to always be on that trip with him like he's just not feeling into things or whatever but it's like he just he has less of it he's, he's not you <laughs> yeah he's literally not me and i'm just projecting my sensitivities yeah. onto him and stuff and and it starts to feel less random when you see when you zoom out to community and you see how his limit limitedness in his person balances out the limitedness of my mother and in our family and how we all carry these like energies that balance out each other yeah everything is perfect and in yeah. perfect balance <laughs> yeah and and when you start to judge it is when you start to fucking doubt that thing yeah you know and and doubt basically what i call cosmic love which yeah. is just it's it's unconditional but it also does not give a fuck about our feelings about it <laughs> you know what i mean so yeah. that's that's kind of cool yeah but what you just said actually made me think about something for the first time ever is like um since like like me and my dad really like like there was a period in my life where i didn't even talk to him he, he yeah. was in jail for two years and i was like i'm not speaking to this motherfucker you know what i mean like he Crazy. really did it this time yeah we're we're closer than ever i think we're you know we're we're as close as two people in a family could be and we would share anything with each other like we strayed so far apart that Mm -hmm. like we became closer than anyone in the family i think the same thing happened with you and your mom yeah whereas my mom and your dad were more of like the steady beat you know the the not you know like the person that's not fucking you know he wasn't there, so I could project whatever. Like, growing up, he was a saint to me. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? He was never exactly. there when he was there. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was excited to see him, you know? Like. That's pretty rad. <laughs> That's the way dads used to do it. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's fucking, he's old school in that way. <laughs> you know, most, I mean, my grandfather didn't show up for any of his kids being born. I called him on Easter Sunday, and I'm like, what's you doing? He's like, in the office. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like how sacrilegious he's like I already went to church <laughs> <laughs> now I'm in my church yeah we all worship different gods and that's like again more of what I'm having to honor in relationship to like we have to respect the like the differentiation in gods that we worship you know mm-hmm. yeah <clears throat> I, I think like when when our little throuple gets into it with each other it's it's usually that it's usually like one or all of us are not recognizing how we're all balancing each other out and right like, be more like me or, or you know like <laughs> yeah, totally. I don't know like, like, I, something like that that's like yeah. a, just like a yeah. dwindling down of the dumb fights we have but yeah. <laughs> um yeah. it's true though it's so true though yeah and the ways at which we make each other uncomfortable usually are like make us better because of the ways that we have like lack or fear in ourselves that yeah. you know this other person doesn't and yeah we have to like work out our duality in that mm-hmm. realm together so i think also because all three of us are such uh we've earned our psychedelic spiritual warriorship we're in and through it people oh yeah so it's a lot of processing all the time there's a lot of processing all the time and there's a lot of like i said feeling like a novice at something that like I have been doing for 24 years straight yeah. being in a relationship, yeah. every kind of relationship within those 24 years yeah. uh, and feeling like I'm new at it and like I suck at it. But then reminding myself, it's just like, that's just because we popped up a dimension. It's just because we're in uncharted territory and yeah. I know that mm-hmm. and I know that that excites me so much that this is worth it and what we go through is worth it. And, um, you know, we're just going to keep trying to fucking pop up. Absolutely. Well, and I'm going through my Saturn return and my seventh house of relationships. So Saturn is going to express himself through you and through Cass because you're my relationship. Mm-hmm. 
And for you, you still have that second house transit. So, like, I also see, like, a lot of what's going on is just, like, more personal, but we're in relationship. And, it, you know, it's like. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they're just, they're just harder shapes sometimes. So. But, ag- again, and I think that's why I love this so much is because it kind of forces me to go through things that otherwise I would oh, completely definitely. avoid, you know. Like, Cass, Cass is saying, when I'm alone, I never I fucking get in a bad mood, this and that. I'm like. Yeah, me neither. Probably most people. Yeah. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah. You isolate. Yeah, you know, unless you're you're going to become your own worst enemy. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, most people can have a good time by themselves. Yeah. Um, the challenge is doing it together. Yeah. The challenge is making the sacrifices necessary to make your partners feel recognized. Yeah. And connected. Yeah. And and excited and creative yeah. and you know. Yeah able to make stuff yeah because that's the goal for all three of us absolutely yeah and the other astrological thing that's going on is the pluto retrograde and that always forces us to think about the ways in which we give away our sovereignty and stuff and that's happening right on your ascendant degree so like your life force so i knew you would be hit harder than other people through this like idea like you're talking about it being this empathic empathetic sponge and being able to feel into people so intensely but still trying to carve out your own path of like okay but like how do I hold my own space within that because I'm never going to lose that connection between me and other people and my compassion and my empathy and stuff but there's a way at which there can probably be more a direct focus and channeling that so that I can feel more sovereign or whatever it is yeah you know um yeah the Pluto retrograde is it's like it's such an outer planet i always think that i'm not going to feel it as most as like the personal planets moving around but it's always like it's it's just an intense experience mm. um and uh i thought yeah, pluto wasn't I, even a planet i know that's what that's what they're saying these days Fuck that shit. <laughs> you can't i don't but think you can do that i don't think you can go calling a motherfucker a planet and then try to take that back it's kind of rude i think at the very at the very least it's just like all right, I guess we got to expand what planets are to yeah. include Pluto now because we already <laughs> bestowed this honor upon him. <laughs> yeah, that Rick and Morty is a classic one. Which one? Oh, they have a Pluto Rick and Morty where they go to Pluto and all the Plutonians are like, this isn't really a planet because I can't remember what the rest of the premise is, but mm. um, who's the dad in Rick and Morty? Jerry. Jerry is championing it being a planet. You don't remember this episode at all? And he goes, uh, that's why I love smoking weed and watching Rick and Morty because we've seen so the same episode seven times in a row. And I'm like, oh, whoa, this is awesome. Yeah, I know. That's the best show ever. Um, but yeah, I think it's like relationships make you more powerful. And I think we like we fall into these illusions because we give Roy our sovereignty that it's like it's taking away our power, you know? It's like it's so all on us all the time. It's actually charging you up. Totally. <laughs> You don't want chocolate, bro. Every time he sees me eating, he comes over. He knows I'm his sugar daddy. He really does know you're his sugar daddy. <laughs> Definitely set that standard with him. He's my bro. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I think he hates having another man around. Sometimes I think he loves it. <laughs> he loves it. Do you love it he or do you hate it? Clothes. He loves oh, it. Oh, that means he loves it. <laughs> when he headbutts you and he puts his eyeball directly on your knee. <laughs> he's hilarious he really is the funniest <laughs> yeah i've been taking him to the beach getting some good runs in with him that's been fucking awesome mm. um, he's um uh, so happy down yeah here. yeah it's crazy yeah i feel like uh he's the dog version of glowing you know how <laughs> like you, you you see an old friend for the first time in a while and they're just doing great in yeah. every aspect of their life and they're just glowing that's Mowgli right now definitely when we got down here he was like fully, he yeah, must be, he's, really he's allergic time. to something. Yeah, he was like New York, broken he has out. a really hard time. Yeah, it's but hard. I feel like he wasn't like that when we were up in New York. And then when we got down here, I thought he reacted to the grass or something. I don't know what it was, but you gave him a crushed up pill and, and his food and he's fine now. Yeah, it's really the outdoors and the sand and the sun and stuff. I think there's something about like the pollen in the environment in New York or something that he's allergic to. Mm. It's also just a stressful environment and psychic warfare, and we live on the devil's corner. And mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to be excited about going back or whatever. Okay, well, let's unpack it. <laughs> Are you not excited <laughs> to go back? To New York? To the best city that the world has ever known <laughs> in summer. 
<laughs> in the year of our Lord. <laughs> like, Ugly. Oh, hey, bro. Oh, my God. Yeah, you want to hit this? <laughs> nice. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Why don't you want to go back? Oh, it's just like every walk with him is like a spa retreat here. I know. I want to see how these plants do and... I could sing at any time and record myself at any time here. Like if I'm inspired at night, it's not really the case in my apartment <laughs> in New York. It's yeah. just a very confined situation. And <coughs> I just, I've talked about this a lot. It's just you deal with it because of all the benefits that you get from like meeting people in New York. But it's like I don't meet anybody or do anything and nobody's there anymore. And it's, uh, it's, like a, it's a little. I'm just like, it's, I'm just, it's just harsh. Like it's all it's I'm harsh. getting is harshness. I'm not getting any of the like crazy magic sparkles that, yeah. you know, were available to get through the harshness that you had to put up with. Yeah. So, and this is so not harsh. It's the opposite. <laughs> it's so soft that I get suspicious every day. I'm like, <gasps> 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 you know, I'm like, is this a dream? <gasps> What's going on? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Should I be doing something or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also looking at all of these things, Mowgli, that people spent so much time making is kind of inspiring to me. Yeah. Like furniture that people clearly spent a lot of days on. Yeah. Instead of mass produced stuff, it's been really cool. That That's inspiring. the whole thing. That's the, the, the feeling of this house. You can feel uh, human. It yeah. feels hum- like humans lived here. It feels like humans made this stuff. Yeah. It, it feels like everything was picked out um, thoughtfully. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, th- I think that there's also, like, something about that generation, you know, because they're really rapidly dying off at this point. Yeah. People that were around for World War II. Yeah. And fought in World War II and shit. Well, they're very, very old now. They're so. very, yeah, they're yeah. very old. Um but like that's like that's the less justifiable war this country will ever fight so like you know what i mean to have people like that that like rose to the occasion and heard the call and you know came together and went into battle and you know we didn't lose nearly as many as as a lot of other countries but like that they did that it's 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 the last time i think that we'll be able to have uh, you know some pride around something our military is doing yeah uh, because we we haven't been able to stay claim it that to that sense right and there's arguments to be made that we can't really even stay claim right. to it right then i mean we we firebombed right dresden and tokyo and we dropped two nuclear bombs on japan yeah. and you know uh yeah. it's it's the worst but you know these guys were part of a generation that went and did that and i think it made them who they were and um I feel like since then we're lost in consumerism and I don't, I don't know if, <coughs> I don't know, maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. we'll turn it around. Who knows? There seems to be a sense of honor Yeah. in the yeah. older generations. And I think it comes through false institutions of religion and stuff. Like it's yeah. not always like good pathways, but I think it, the expression of it usually makes somebody's life better, you know, yeah. just because there, like, there is a sense of accountability to community and being a good influence and an impact on community. And um, we, s- yeah, some of it's it's crazy because like it feels like we used to be more connected, but we're like more connected now and in, in a lot of different ways. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess more fractured, is definitely, definitely more distracted, more complex and more fractured, and definitely more distracted. Oh God, so more distracted. I was thinking about. Beethoven and Mozart and Mozart and they're like battling dueling improvisation battles and like Hell yeah. just like the capacity for human consciousness to focus in that time before we had like any distractions you yeah, know what I mean? like I how know. dope people probably were at improvising and stuff and like it's just the stage we're going through because the truth is we're so connected now that it's like it's it's so intimate like it's seeing so people's real. lives and pictures of their lives and videos and fucking like it's just it's it's too connected that I think we're medicating in a way and it, we'll, we'll get we'll get through it like this is a step in our alienhood yeah like like well, oh, discovering technology that is l- like a mushroom just puts everything together yeah and you know, yeah. we're going to we're 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 like right now in the possession of that technology we're like tantruming toddlers yeah and we're going to we're going to grow up we're, we're going to grow up this country is still young 
So I wouldn't bet against it. I, as much as I'd love the empire to crumble, trust me, um, this country's still very young and it's still got a very powerful military. Yeah. Um, that shit changes though. Yeah. Uh, a, a, a very powerful military, even the, the greatest military the world's ever known, could be obsolete in 10 years. One technological change that another country discovers before us changes the fucking game, you know? So um, it's going to be interesting the way things shake out. I I hope that thing I hope that as people we continue to get more and more peaceful. Um, there's a lot of forces working against that right now, and a lot of a lot of forces <laughs> that are uh, not so subtly just convincing people to be for war in, yeah. in in some way, whatever angle they can get on somebody. Yeah. Well, we're much more psychically connected now, which is why being around people feels more intimate too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like that's definitely happening. Like we're, we're definitely, and it's not just happening to like people that are aware of it. Like it's happening to everybody. Mm. Um, and my mom was even asking me cause she th- like her main life is throwing people parties. Mm. She said at the last one, she felt social anxiety and she's never felt that before. And I thought it was weird too. And I, she, I just said, the only thing I can think of is like, literally we're just more connected right now. So it's a more in- intense experience. It's high, it feels high stakes. There's more dis like you're going to feel the dissonance that in- yeah. if somebody thinks something weird about you around them and you're going to, you know, no, there's there isn't yeah. you know there isn't that detachment about stuff anymore mm. um and yeah people are influencing you through like media and propaganda but there's also like a ton of psychic influences and the governments have been using silent sound technology for a long time way longer than you think that they have and technology has been way more advanced than you think it has for a long time too oh yeah um yeah and just like when you teach one dolphin something and the rest of them learn it, like it's kind of been happening to us on a con- you know on a psychic conscious level too. And I was thinking about that with the Wi-Fi the other day because we've been you've been getting into your first little bit of paranoia about how that affects us. Yeah. And I already went down that trip a couple years ago. So sometimes in a ritual I'll turn my Wi-Fi off at night. But I the story that I believe more than it negatively affecting us is that we adapt and we're like, that's just the essence of who we are as humans that we're going to adapt to the Wi-Fi. But then I started thinking like, what if it's helping our psychic connection? What if like the oh, internet shit. and like us connecting through there is literally like the airwaves are more connected and that's where our minds are. And so like, I don't know, <laughs> like it's, the frequencies yeah. are like connecting us more, like having these frequencies around each other, you know? Yeah. Um, Whoa. Yeah. It's like having a new appendage. Mm-hmm. you know, that we've tapped into this kind yeah. of technology that can help us communicate on this level to people across the world instantly. Yeah, um, because just like when I take, or, you know, when you take acid with people that you're connected with and you can like hear their thoughts or start to see through their eyes or whatever, I think that's just like the the where human consciousness evolution is going. Mm. Like this technology is like a bridge and then we're going to not use this technology anymore because we're not going to need it because we're going to be able to just like phone your grandma on the side of the planet and you'll have conversations. Oh, shit. You know, through that way. But it's like a, it's like a, the AI bridge arm helping us understand that mm. we're not like limited in that way. Wow. Well, we're not. We've just convinced ourselves yeah. that we are. Yeah. And, and um, I haven't probably spoken to this kind of thing in a long time, but... Uh, and it sounds trippy, but it's but it's true, and anyone can try it. If you ever want to have a conversation with anyone anywhere, like just go close your eyes, and feel into it, and feel into that being, and communicate what you need to communicate, and they'll communicate back. And it's almost like tapping into the akashic records. It's like everything that's ever happened has already happened. It's like, and it's all happening at once. And it's all yes, exactly, exactly. So it's like you can you can tap into all these vibes and different permutations and this is some real stoner shit but <laughs> i've experienced it because like oh yeah i mean i've i've a couple times in my life gone through whether it's through through death or breakups mm-hmm. or whatever just a, a heartbreak on a level that i fucking can't I handle and uh you know is uh i can't talk to the person anymore so you got to like find other ways so i accidentally stumbled on this yeah and it's kind of what made me but, but because because then things that took place in that conversation would like you know what i mean mm-hmm. like like there there was cord cutting that could go on there was yep. healing there was grieving that could go on mm-hmm. and um it would be true in this reality yeah you know the imagination's a powerful thing absolutely we've had many episodes about that absolutely but. 
Yeah, no, and there are people that I think have more, like, superpowers to tap deeper into, like, ancestry and people's ancestry, but we all have that capacity, and I've experienced it, too, with um, people in my family that have passed and calling on them for their help, and not necessarily in that moment ha- it happening, but then in the weeks unfolding, and then, like, feeling more of their spirit and their presence, and yeah. in the advice that I was giving myself, or, like, the small, like, reactions or the instincts that I was having to things, Um. So yeah, no, or I, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a co- I'm, I'm so excited about it. Like, I'm so excited to live in this time, even though I can get really depressed about being in it too, because I think it's what's, overwhelming. what's happening beyond the 3D is like fucking super crazy and cool. Oh, it's, it's super it's, crazy it, and it's cool amazing. stuff happening. It <laughs> sucks that, that the 3D is so fucking, we're all fucking bought and paid for already. It sucks that yeah, like, th- that, that that's the challenge of the actual like 3D reality. Yeah. Cause when, cause when you start surfing up to like 5d, 60, 70 shit, like, Oh my God, it's fucking incredible. I wish we could more effectively take the inspiration from those realms back here and do something about it. And I guess we do by honoring it, Yeah. but it, you know, it does feel like, um, we're, we're slowly but surely becoming more oppressed, you know, yeah. and, and, and our rights are being taken away. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, and the, but the more that you tap into those higher states of being and higher dimensions, the more easily accessible they are to other col- other people in the collective conscious. Because anybody yeah, can also yeah. tap into you, just like you can tap into anybody else. And yeah. we're all affecting each other, whether we know it or not. You know, like we're all raising each other's frequency or lowering each other's frequency on the planet. Yeah, and that's like, I feel like that's really when you enter the spiritual journey is you start feeling that accountability to the rest of the people on the planet about like, I just like have to have a high frequency because it's my responsibility. And like, mm. if I have the privilege to be able to control my frequency, like I goddamn better keep the high, Yeah, <laughs> you know, Absolutely. like how dare I be yeah. a- And if people can tap into this, like I just said, yeah, keep that shit high and tight. Yeah. Yeah. Make yeah. sure that your shit is pimp tight yeah. every time. Yeah. Yeah. No. And don't think like, just like when you're around people and you say nice things about them in your head and they feel that they'll feel it when you're in your bed going to sleep at night too. I swear to fucking God. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking wild. Yeah. That's that Pisces magic. That's what it is. I always think about that. Like, w- like praying for your friends and stuff to me. That's like, a peak expression of like Pisces love, like not telling you, but like secretly magically working things out for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Imagining good things for each other and such, such and such. Well, yeah, that's why it's, it's, that's why it's so important that we stay on a positive vibration, you know, it is, is so that that's easily accessible. And so we can all just be fucking cheering each other on. I think that's truly what community is all about. It's like, a group of like-minded fucking heads coming together and being like, yo, we all got each other's back psychically. Let's fucking do it. Let's all pray for each other. I <laughs> think yeah. that's one of the best channels on the discord is you see Hell people yeah. like, like, like prayers and requests for prayers. Yeah. That's it. Uh, the, like asking, asking people who you don't know in person, like, uh, can you join in and, in, in helping me manifest this thing is such a vulnerable expression. You know, it's so beautiful and it connects us. Yeah. So, you know, and I I think that's why that's why church is cool. I think that's why even though I didn't believe in any of the stuff that they were talking about, every time I left Sunday mass growing up, I felt on cloud nine. Mm, Yeah. Probably first of all, because it's over. Secondly, yeah. but I sat there and sang with a bunch of people and yeah. we said prayers and invocations together and we yeah. took communion. Yeah. Like, yeah. Which it's going to do something. Yeah. Which now I think mo- like the modern man or modern woman gets a lot probably through yoga and not even in like the actual practice of it, but just in the activity of being with a group of people that's all trying to better themselves and raise their frequency and that being like the intent of the group Mm -hmm. you know that's why the military is such a bonding experience for people yeah you know what i mean yeah as atrocious as what it is you're going to do yeah um it usually starts with um people from the poorest classes uh in desperate situations having to go towards this thing to better themselves and then there's a group of people that's trying to better themselves and look at they they all become jacked beasts yeah you know yeah i know sometimes i go out into this little bloody marsh pathway where there was like a big battle and it's kind of trippy to just look out over there and think about people fighting and stuff yeah that was a wild time to be alive yeah fucking what war do you remember was it the civil war yeah i mean yeah around those times you know the beginning of america 
<coughs> claimings of the land. Oh, so so, so pre Civil War, maybe even pre Revolutionary War. I don't know what kind of battles were would have been fought out here on a fucking island off Georgia. Got to be civil, then I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna look into it though. I'm okay. very interested in all that stuff and whatever went down in, in the bloody marsh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was like a nature term. <laughs> And you're like, no, there was a battle fought there. And I'm like thinking about these fucking guys trudging through this. Like, how do we not hear more tales from history of complete battlefields of dudes being like, what are we doing? Yeah. Stop. Like, it's fucking freezing. Yeah. Let's all build a fire and fucking jam out. <laughs> we got some good morphine. <laughs> let's fucking, let's get crazy. Uh, yeah. No, it's hard to it's hard to imagine. I and it, I just have to tell myself with history, like it literally is just a, a totally different place in the human consciousness. I just think about the people that like were a little bit more awake at that time and how excruciating it must have been and stuff. You know. Well, th- think about how excruciating excruciating it is for us right now. Well, yeah, it's, that's it's what so I'm excruciating. I'm, I'm, I can't <laughs> engage at all. I know. I cannot pay John, attention. I don't even have Instagram. <laughs> that's that's taking it even further. <laughs> you know. But yeah, no, you can't escape it. If you're on Instagram. You I'm already connected to all y'all, by the way. I already know what you're thinking. Like, just so you know, yeah. I'm not just not personal from with the community. Mare. Yeah, it's not. No, I'm with you. I'm just like very with you. Yeah. Yeah. And if you ever need Mare. I'm sh- here. Sh- yes. 1,000%. Yes, very much so. And I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, I know. I love all of our people. They're probably, the best. Probably because, and nothing earns my respect quicker than a motherfucker being vulnerable you know yeah. what i mean absolutely and don't abuse that or whatever like or, or <laughs> fucking over dramatize that's not what i'm saying i mean like just someone tapping into what's really going on with them yeah and, and letting down the the personality ego part yeah coming from the heart you yeah. know i grew up around that i grew up with my dad in aa yeah so it was like just a revolving door of men that he sponsored or were sponsoring him that are just like yeah. especially the ones he sponsored they're at the lowest point in their life yeah 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 and just being around that it softens you up yeah yeah no and then i think about the awakeness of the younger generations and like I probably would have been Greta Thunberg or whatever the hell her name was when I was younger. And I like, you know, came Stop to realize driving. That you guys were because I was like, I, you know, I was at like Peter rallies when I was young, too. You know, when I found yeah. out about animal abuse, you know, you're passionate when you're young. You hear about yeah. how, all the wrongs of the planet and you're like, it fucks you up. Yeah, it fucks you up. Yeah. I found out all about all the pedophiles. I'm scared of a fun life, too. I was like, well, yeah, it's not worth it. <laughs> No, it's it's funny. When when I was a kid, I was it, it, it would all fuck me up. It would fuck me up. It would fuck me up. And then in my twenties, like when your ego is really fucking taking over, and you feel like a, you're dominating the world or whatever, it all fucking got desensitized. And then I took mushrooms. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm like, you know, like I'm saying, like too sensitive to it all. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, it's really intense. It's really really intense. Um. Yeah, heaven is totally accessible and ever present in every moment for you but like it's a lot of hellscapes on this planet that people are living and working through and yeah yeah no and if you are like the more that you feel as a human you will feel into that and you're gonna feel into everything and feel into all the experiences of everybody and 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 feel like you're floundering yeah but i i think you know a, a good way of thinking about it is what i said before is like you're becoming more sensitive. You're becoming more godly. You know, yeah. you're you're becoming more at one with yourself, and you're going to learn how to deal with those things. But, you know, as as I got increased sensitivities, I started living a more conscious life. Mm-hmm. I took mushrooms when I was 32, and I was like, I just started eating better. Mm-hmm. Really, that was a big thing, and yeah. I started um, being better with my family because mm-hmm. I think I, I was I was just blinded by career and ego and all this drinking all this stuff before that and like the connection was like a little bit lost and the mushroom was just telling me to do those things so you know i felt the calling and i did something about it and yeah that's what you that's what you can do in response to your increased sensitivities is come up with new practices carve new paths figure out how to integrate that because because you're becoming sensitive to those things for a reason you know oh totally absolutely to deal with them yeah it's all there's always fruit at the other side of being uncomfortable but 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta get through the being uncomfortable. For sure. <laughs> oh, that's for sure. That's for sure. For sure. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, I want to become more and more sensitive. And I know now that that entails more and more pain. Yeah, you know? but, and but I know what I signed up for it, with it. It's the pain of, um, like, like you have an ill-fitting shoe on. Just take it off. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, yeah, you're going to be more sensitive to the ground around you. But, like, th- wasn't that ill-fitting shoe, like, kind of, like, causing a lot of other problems? Like, yeah. let's just fucking nip it in the bud here. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the best analogy I can make on the fly. But, like, yeah. um, I'm, I'm going through it, you know? I think... Uh, there's some people that are just kind of more like that. The bubble buddies out there, you know. I think you and I can ride with the bubble buddies like the best of them, but we also swing into the other direction. Yeah. And that's a wild ride. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what we would call that, though, because that's like past sensitive. It's like... Psychic savagery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going all, need the need to go all the way with something like... I don't know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the need to go know. all the way We're or something. Neither of us are like emotional <laughs> hoarders. Um, and uh, yeah, you like to keep all the realms clean, but I definitely don't like store up a bunch in my no. head either. So no. I also think it has to do with just like the amount of energy that we're asked to big channel in this lifetime. And, you know, you're, you can't really control that. Yeah. It's like a lot of energy. Yeah. So, you know, you just, it takes longer for you to be able to learn how to do it in a way that's effective for other people, you know. Mm. Yeah. We both we both do a the a similar dance with uh with substances too. Like, you know, we'll go in and through it. We'll do our dance with the whatever it is. Yeah. And that's that. Yeah. It's um, you know, Maybe some people would look at us and be like, "You need to go to rehab," but it's like, no, I don't. Really, I, there's probably nothing I couldn't drop like like that, and <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> I've never I've never really abused anything besides uh, cannabis, but I don't think of that as abuse. I think of that as honoring. Yeah. Uh, yeah, welcoming her. Um, yeah. To guide my life in, in yeah. a more sensitive way, in a more caring way. Yeah. Uh, where I could follow the music better, because that's what I'm here to do. Hell yeah. Yeah, I've abused things before, but I think through abuse, I learned to be more sensitive into to abuse in my relationships, to like my alchemical relationships yeah. and stuff. You know what I mean? Um. So yeah, I think like yeah, I try and be a good magician. You know, I try and I try and do the. Sean like really annoyingly pulled the magician card two days ago. When we asked him to pull one card, which happens like a upsetting amount of times. <laughs> I'll pull whatever card you fucking want me to. That's the thing. I don't even need to ask. I'm going to pull whatever card you want me to. Yeah, probably. I'm such an empty vessel on those things. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's the key to the magic. You know yeah. what I mean? It's it's yeah. not like, grrr, focus. It's fucking empty it out. Yeah. Because the magic is... It's like the Wi-Fi. It's already there. It's It's been yeah. there. You just need to fucking boot up your router. Tap right. into that fucker. Yeah. It's true. Hell yeah. It's true. Yeah, I think we, we're like all just channeling in this life. Nothing else. Choose your channel. Yeah. Tune into what you got. Hell yeah. Tune into, Tune into that church of chill. <laughs> <laughs> we just made uh I just put it out right before we got on here. One of my favorite Church of Chill episodes. Heavy magic Krishna. Magic yeah. Mother Invocation. But it's in the it's in the heavy Krishna. Um Heavy Krishna is going to be an umbrella, like a genre for us. Yeah. Um, yeah, this one's called Magic Mother Invocation. And it's like two hours of, uh, I don't know, what would you call it? It's, it's church music for us. Absolutely. It'll put you in a trance, just music to, to just put you in a it's trance. It's trancey, it's meditative, yeah. it's heavy, it's light. Yeah, yeah. Just put that out. Um, that's on patreon.com slash church of chill. Yeah. A lot of other cool stuff on there. Yeah. It's where we premiered our movie, American Sunset, yeah. which is out now for free on the YouTube. Yeah. A generous offering, yeah. if I say so. <laughs> it's a generous offering of Steve to let us go film him and uh, just be patient with me while I got my shit together to edit it and basically show him it for the first time like a half hour before we put it out and he's just like cool dude yeah you inspire me man yeah. and i'm like wow I, like i was i was fucking sweating to the oldies for a second yeah. like what if he doesn't like this like i i you know 
Like, what the fuck? I'm not going to be able to put it out. But, uh, yeah, all good. Check out American Sunset. It's the best. Yeah, it's all like-minded you head. You should watch it. Yeah, and it's, um, it's, it's like it's, it's the pregame to what we're doing this summer. You think? Yeah, I feel like uh, all of the films uh, have always, for me, like come in little pairs and triplets. Uh huh. And yeah, this this feels like the finishing of like the American Juggalo trio, but th- it's not really that. It's the beginning yeah. of something else. Yeah. And I think this leads perfectly into Wooks, and then Wooks leads perfectly into the next thing, which I can't really talk about yet. But yeah. Um, yeah, and and there'll be a way if you want to uh, support the making of Wooks. We need to raise a little bit of money to be able to do this. Um, there'll be a way to do that soon. But if you're a baller and you want to be like Noah, come in and save the day, executive produce something like Wooks, um, let it, reach out. Just reach yeah, out. We'll, king we'll of work Pentacles. Something out. Yeah. Come to the table. Yeah, there's got to be a King of Pentacles out there. You I know. need you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do need you. Thank you. Damn, I don't know what the next thing is after Wooks. Now I'm all excited about it. Well, th- there's lots of stuff, and we've talked about filming some stuff, and you know, but uh, yeah, it needs to. It it it's gonna it's gonna finish out a little triplet of things. And yeah. Yeah, American Sunset was the 14th uh, movie that I've made. Woohoo! So number 15 should be Wooks. I think. I think you'll see that this fall. Amazing. Yeah, I just put out this. I, I just put together the schedule of like where we're gonna have to do, go to do what I envision us doing. Yeah. And it's gonna be really cool. Yeah. So, thank you, Mayor Bear. Do you have anything you want to shout out or recommend or anything? No, I'm cocooning. Yeah. Yeah. We're Still cocooning. a caterpillar. Um. Yeah. Do you wanna do a Patreon? I'm down. Yeah. You wanna? Yeah. Oh, this will be fun. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. Well, meet us over on the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Church of Chill. Yes. Peace, love, and magic, y'all. Shoo.